Hey there ladies and gents, welcome back to the vlog. My name is Drew and today we are going to be starting a little bit of a new series. It's still in the vein of startup and startup related stuff, but I have to catch my breath. <laughs> that was a long sentence that I just said, whoa. Okay, sorry. So um, kind of a startup-y themed video series, but I figure in the time that I've been working at Mechanics Code Works and working on the Food for Group project, and I'll be doing another video about each what each of those means, um, uh, I've come across a lot of interesting stories. And I think one of the best ways to gain experience at anything that you do is to listen to the stories of people who have been through it or people who have experienced similar issues and see how they kind of react to everything. And so. With that in mind, I am starting a new series today called Startup Stories, and each one of these will be a little story that uh, I've encountered through my time working on Food for Group and working out a software startup and having to manage a couple different people and really going from just a, a minor software project to now a full-fledged application that people are using and is hopefully helping the world around me. So today's startup story is titled that one time that I pushed a code deployment 20 minutes before a press conference or a press debut, I should say. So to give you guys a little bit of background, Food for Group, which is the project that our first application, so Mechanics Codeworks is the parent company and underneath Mechanics is Food for Group. And we have some other applications that are in development, but Food for Group is our primary focus right now. And what Food for Group is, is it is a digital food services platform. Now, if you've never heard the term digital food before, it's mostly because we pretty much invented it, uh, at least in this context. There may have been people who have said digital food before, but digital food here means that any service or any sort of application or code that helps enable food or food delivery or food ordering or helping out you know, people in the food service industry. So a digital food services platform. What that means is that Food for Group, if you go online and you go to foodforgroup.com slash info slash FFG for business, you can get a bigger blurb about all of this, but basically Food for Group has a bunch of different services underneath it. We have services to list your restaurant on our site. We have services where you can list your menu on our site. Both of those are free, by the way. We have a service called Pop-Up, which we'll be talking about in a second. Pop-Up is for pop-up chefs and pop-up kitchens. We have reporting software, ledger software, so software that allows you to track orders and see reporting and analytics in real time. All of these things are in the works. And the most recent thing that we debuted is what I was just talking about, Food for Group Pop-Up. If you're unfamiliar with what a pop-up kitchen is, a pop-up kitchen is basically a small one-day event where a chef or a team will get together at an event or a venue or a festival or something. They'll pop up for one day, they'll make a bunch of food, sell it to the general public, and it's a really great way to gauge interest for your food for a larger restaurant or a food truck. And it also is a good way for you to start making a little bit of money and see if you're really cut out for the food service biz and if building a restaurant or building a brand around your food is really for you or the, the course of action that you want to take. So we built a service called Food for Group Pop-Up that is meant to help you manage a pop-up. And we were very, very lucky and so, so grateful that we have a team um, called Not Your Lola's. And Not Your Lola's is a Filipino style pop-up kitchen. And I believe Lola is the Filipino word for like grandma, so not your grandma's Filipino food. Um, the One of the founders at Not Your Lola's was actually a guy that I went to high school with and we were in band together and it was really cool. But we partnered up after a while. Um, it was actually kind of a serendipitous coming together. And um, we, it kind of, we caught up for a little bit about, you know, band and back in the day. But the guy that I work with, his dad is also an inventor. So he knows the value of giving us that first shot because it's, it's extremely hard, at least when you're first starting out, to get your first clients or to get that first person that's willing to test your stuff and see how it works. And we've been very fortunate at Food for Group to have a couple people that have helped us out with that. But, and I have the world to thank for those people, including the team at Not Your Lola's because this was an interesting thing. So Not Your Lola's had a pop-up on August the 21st. It was 21st, it was a Wednesday um, in 2019. And we had been working on pop-up for about a month, month and a half before that. And when we sat down and met with their team, we're like, hey, this is what we're working on. 
we'd love to pilot with you. And they're like, sure, cool, we can do that. Um, so our goal, that was on like the end of July. Our goal was to have everything polished and finished by the 14th. That would give us a week to work with them, to train them and get them ready. Uh, it didn't work out that way. So we got a good portion of everything done on the 14th. But then we sat down with the Not Your Lola's team and um, they had a bunch of different ideas and some feedback. And so we implemented that. And then we came back and they had some more ideas. So typical requirements gathering sort of stuff. So if you've ever done Agile Methods or Scrum, it's just requirements gathering. We got their ideas, we put it into implementation back and forth. Um, and one thing you have to learn about being in a software startup is that the common man or the layman doesn't necessarily always understand how much effort goes into implementing some features. So it's not their fault either way. Um, we were thankfully able to get most everything they wanted implemented uh, within a day or two. So that was really, really nice. There was just minor revisions, like they wanted a feature here, rework this, switch that, that sort of thing. Um, so me and one of my business partners, the guy who heads up our test team, uh, we probably, in that, week, in that week, I wanna say that I saw him more than I saw my actual family. Like we were just testing night and day, all day long. And it was really fun. It was like, it was cool to like get everything set up. And I think he really grew and learned a lot more about the platform. And <clears throat> I of course was kind of coming into my own because I would get a new requirements from the Not Your Lola's team. And then we'd have another meeting in like three days. So I'd have like a three day turnaround to get it all finished up. And that worked. Um, but what we ran into was basically, um, so it was like the 17th or the 18th, like three days before the pop-up. We sit down with our final meeting with Not Your Lola's. Um, no, it was the day before, it was the 20th, I think. Yeah, it was the 20th. So we sit down, everything's looking good. We do a dry run. I show them the platform, everything like that. And the way the pop-up works is that there's a QR code, an online ordering QR code. And basically anybody who walks up can order that way. And so it eliminates the need for a line entirely or a till. You can just have everybody do the orders on their phone. And it hits the management page in the back, which the cooks are looking at and they make the dishes and send it out. Um, I'm actually gonna do a demo or there's gonna be a demo on the Food for Group Instagram page. So make sure to follow at Food for Group uh, on Instagram because we'll be putting up a highlight of how pop-up works and everything like that. We're gonna do that for all of our services, but I think pop-up's gonna be one of the first ones because we have tested it now and it, we know it works in the wild. But anyway, um, getting back to it. So we run through everything the night before looking good. Um, and we have a payment processing um, platform called Stripe, or we use Stripe for all of our payment processing. And so I get a call from one of the Not Your Lola's guys and he's just doing final checks and we go through things and um, he got all signed up with Stripe and everything like that. We had some last minute things that we needed to tweak. So I was working on that. And my business partner and I agreed that we were gonna meet up probably a couple hours before to test everything out and um, just go through it one more time, make sure everything's tested. And um, this is where I call the battle of the one yard line. So there's an old saying, astronauts have this saying that you don't go into space with your fingers crossed. And that's something that I believe wholeheartedly here at Mechanics. What we're doing isn't rocket science, but it's pretty dang close. And um, so we don't go into a client meeting, we don't stake our clients livelihoods or if they're gonna make money or not on us being with our fingers crossed. We always test our software and make sure that we do a dry run everything. We had done like load balancing tests, everything was looking good, the infrastructure was holding up. Um, so everything was clicking and it was good. Um, so my business partner and I, we meet up about four or five hours beforehand and we run through everything and the Wi-Fi at his house is super duper slow. Okay, so then we hop in my car, we go to a Starbucks and it's a lot quicker. We start working through everything, it's looking good. And one of the big aspects of pop-up is that there is this text messaging service that we use. And we text you when your order is placed and then we text you when your order is finished up. So you can go back to the pickup area and pick up your food. I had ran into an issue the night before where we were finding that the text messages weren't sending. And the text messaging backend we use is hosted through AWS and AWS is our, our infrastructure partner, or one of them I should say. And so I come to find out that one of the text messaging services isn't working. And we figured this out like two or three hours beforehand. So I'm freaking out and I start typing away on the internet and I find 
an article where it talks about the different servers and everything like that. At this point, I figured there was just like one or two servers that the topics or the uh, SMSs go through. And so we we look at it and we switch over to a server and it starts sending texts again, thank God. So I literally just sat there and was like, oh, thank God. Um, so, but apparently Amazon also has these service limit increases that you have to do. So we put in a request for a service limit, service limit increase for the, the texting platform that we were using. And I guess they have those in place to make sure that you don't make just like a bogus account and start spamming people with text messages. But the turnaround on those is around 24 hours. And so we put it in at like three o'clock, the events at 5.30. So it's like, okay. This isn't going to go through, but uh, we switched it over with the servers and everything was going good. And thankfully, a couple days later, we got the service limit increase that we needed. So we should never have to face this problem in the future. But in the moment, it was like, oh, thank God, you know, we switched the servers over and we're good. Then we go through and we test everything. We check Stripe and the dashboard to make sure all the money is getting where it needs to be. And we find an accounting error. And this is big because our whole platform or our whole thing with Food for Group is we don't take a dime from any of the restaurants that partner with us. We don't have restaurants pay for the privilege of using our platform. We instead just take a small commission on all orders that are placed and we kind of put a disclaimer that lets you know that, hey, when you pay this little bit extra, you're actually supporting small business. You're making sure that everybody gets or the restaurant or the cooks actually get every last cent that they're owed versus some of our competitors who take directly from them. And then they also charge the customer in some cases, which is rather nefarious if you ask me. Um, but anyway, so we find this accounting error and we figure out that not all the money is trickling back. And so we rush and we do a bunch of like paper math just to figure everything out. Luckily, it was just one extra variable. I had done a little bit of an arithmetic error. We figured it out, that was fixed. So at this point, one of the core feature sets for pop-up wasn't working, the text messaging, we got that fixed. The Probably the highest priority feature set wasn't working and that was the payout structure. We got that finished. So two things that are in the core functionality like a must have for the feature set went down and we got those fixed. So what else could possibly go wrong? Well, um, we get to the venue, we get there a little bit early uh, just to make sure and traffic in Dallas on a Wednesday at five o'clock is still pretty rough. So we get there, thankfully we're there before the clients are um, and they come in about 20 minutes later and we uh, they're starting to set up and everything like that. And the guy that I was working with at the Not Your Lowest team is like, hey, how hard would it be to do this one thing with this feature set or like um, there's a mechanism within uh, pop-up where you can sell out of an item and once you sell out people can't order the dish anymore on their end so we had built that out for the main dishes but we also have this section called add-ons where you could add these add-ons to your dishes and stuff like that and it's like hey how hard would it be to write a sold out mechanism for add-ons and I'm like I was sitting there and I was like I, I imagine the dog was in the room and it's on fire it's like this is fine but um to give you some perspective, to write a sellout mechanism 30 minutes before, I'm just like, that's not gonna happen. So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking to myself and I'm like, this isn't gonna happen, I'm sorry. But what we can do is we have a workaround and my business partner thought of a workaround on the spot. He's like, hey, why don't we just make two dishes, one with the add-on, one without, and you can just sell that one without the add-ons. And it all worked out. Um, so we did that. And then we go and we try to, so he leaves his account sign into our computer so that we can get everything set up. They can just focus on, getting their pop-up set up. And so we go in, we try adding some stuff and everything like that. And for whatever reason, this aspect that we had tested just wasn't working. Um, and what we nailed it down to was we must have changed something with the core structure of how the menus were made in the pop-up. And we, so like the menus were structured a certain way, then we added some features and it changed the structure of the menu. So it wasn't, adding or deleting or editing any of these items. So I'm like, okay, crap. Um, so number three, so it was either people weren't gonna get texts, people weren't gonna get paid, or people weren't gonna get accurate menu items. So now we have three core features that have happened in the same day. And now we're 20 minutes from opening, or like the day that we were supposed to be ready. Um, and we have to figure this out. So at this point I've gone like full Asperger's. Like I'm just sitting there in a flow state, just trying to figure it out, thinking it out. I try and sign into our database that holds all of our stuff. I'm like, okay, I can just like hardline fix everything or hard code everything and we'll just fix it and then we'll be good on the back end. 
I can't sign in to the production database because we've got it locked down and everything like that. And um, so that wasn't working. And so I'm just sitting there thinking and I'm like, holy colorful word here. Um, we had built this as kind of the coming out party for pop-up. You know, we had put stuff on our Instagram that this was like a, a debut and everything. We had some other pop-up chefs that were coming. I'm like, we cannot like let this fail. Like I'm not gonna explain to people all night that we couldn't have this ready in time when we build it as this is the product debut for pop-up. And it was more of a pilot, I should say. It wasn't the actual debut, but it was a pilot. Um, and so that's another thing that you have to work on. As a startup CEO, you have to be very cognizant of overselling your product. And I may have oversold it just a little bit. Um, so something I'm working on. So we basically, we have to, we've got 20 minutes till we gotta go and we just have to rebuild this entire pop-up from scratch. And so, it was like tiptoeing basically because we had to rebuild the pop-up, so re-input all the information about the pop-up. We had to rebuild the menu knowing full well if we make one wrong stroke or one mistake, we may not be able to recover. We'll have to start all the way back and starting another pop-up. And now we had printed out some flyers with QR codes on them so that people could scan them and order. But um, so now we had to figure out a way to get the new QR code because QR codes are dynamic on pop-up. You don't have the same QR code for every pop-up. So we had to figure that out. and. Um, so we rebuild it, everything, the menu's good. Thankfully, the Not Your Lola's team was very patient with us. They weren't like crazy frustrated with us about having to get the menu data again. They had it all written out on the board too, which was nice. So we just took a picture of the board, we typed everything out and that was that. So we get it all built up. And so now we've conquered three things, the text messaging, the payouts, and then um, finally the menu not playing nice. We get everything squared away. Um, and then the last, objective or the last sort of thing in our way was we had to figure out how to get this QR code working. So we took a snapshot or a screenshot of the QR code and my business partner had his MacBook and we just blew it up on his MacBook screen and put it on a table. And then we also had a little flyer about um, what the processing fee was all about and how it supports small business and everything like that. And God bless the whole night for like two or so hours, nothing was built on that uh, keyboard or that Mac and it was beautiful. And it looked really futuristic because it's like, this is a 100% digital food platform and it's on a computer. So it's, it kind of, it looked very picturesque, I guess you could say. So inevitably everything works out, uh, thank God. And um, so we had pushed our final build 20 minutes beforehand and we had to basically rebuild everything in 20 minutes time and that's where I get the story. It's like, here's how I push the final bill before a press release. Um, and thankfully we got it. And the last thing that we were worried about, once all was said and done, we got all set up, there were some objections about our processing fee. Um, the Not Your Lola's guys were like, hey, it seems a little steep. I'm like, we were both of the opinion, my partner and I were like, hey, let's just try this out. Um, it may be the case that people don't even notice it or that sort of thing where they don't mind paying it compared to other services. And we'd done the math, like compared to other services, we we're still saving them like 12 or 13%. And so all night, it was amazing. Um, it was a really a moment to be beside myself, to be honest. Um, the past 48 hours leading up to that, I had this sinking feeling in my gut that I just wanted to throw up. Um, if you've ever seen Silicon Valley, the show on HBO, there's a lot of throwing up in that. And now I feel that way because um, you want so badly for everything to work and you want to make a good impression and you don't want to risk the company's reputation on a bad demo or something like that. So it was a lot of stress. I wouldn't say it's the most stressful that I've ever been in my life, but it was a lot of stress. And for 48 hours, I just had the sinking feeling that I was going to puke at any moment. But the first couple of customers come through, they look at it, they think it's really freaking cool, which is awesome for me. And like, it was a moment for me because I looked down and people are looking at their phones and that's code that I wrote and that's code that my team has tested. And we've been looking at it for months now, like just working, debugging and everything like that. You become kind of numb to how everything looks, but they're experiencing it for the first time. They're seeing it for the first time. And they're like, wow, this is cool. This is awesome. Or this is really easy. We put a couple orders in, they come through no problem. The Not Your Lola's team is kicking ass in the kitchen. And like, I didn't have that feeling of wanting to puke anymore. I kind of read a sigh of relief. And I all I wanted to do was cry because it's, it's something amazing to have somebody use your code or use something to their benefit or something that helps them and that you had a part in that. 
And the, the theme of the night after that was just, we did it. Like that was just a calling card for me and my uh, business partner. We were just like, we did it. And we stood there all night and we just showed people how to use the platform and talked up how this is kind of the digital food revolution that we're trying to create. This is the future food. And everybody was vibing with it. Um, a lot of the other pop-up chefs came by. We've got some meetings scheduled with them. So I went from stressing out, wanting to puke and, um, basically a rush to the finish and a fight on the one yard line and i never gave up and i thank my business partner because there were some times where i legitimately like was beside myself he's like hey bring it back in we're still in this and so i guess the point of the story is even if you have to push code 20 minutes before or even if you are just on the one yard line and you are fighting for your business or fighting for your reputation or fighting for your life even sometimes um don't give up, I would say. It, it sounds so cliche, but don't give up. There's always, always something that you can do and there's always another thing that you can think about. Do not despair. Chances are you, if you've created a software project or you created an application and you've gotten to the point where you're debuting it, you're probably pretty smart. And so there's always a solution that you can think of. And in those moments when you're stressed out the most is usually when the miracles start to kick in. So there's just something that happens in your brain you don't, know how or why but you just start thinking in a certain way and you get really creative and very in the zone very quickly and i thank god because god had a huge hand in that night and um he he kind of intervened and i'm pretty sure that he gave me those thoughts and he gave me that creativity that we needed to get to the final push but even if you don't believe in god believe in some higher power and you know there there's an aspect of it where you kind of put your hands off and it's like okay it's in your hands now um lord it's in your hands but um do everything that you possibly can even to the last minute to make sure everything is right and perfect and never never stop because it's better to have a bad debut and show somebody something than having to apologize all night and say that we weren't ready in time so people are willing to believe that something is still in testing if you position it that way it's like oh if this is a beta product like we, we were telling people like we're testing this we're piloting this and so there were some snafus here and there but they were mostly forgivable but i know if i had to stand there all night and i had to explain to some of the pop-up chefs that i had talked to before about how we weren't ready and we were so excited a week ago to work with you guys but now we're not ready that wouldn't i'm sure they wouldn't think any of it but i would not be able to sleep with myself at night or i wouldn't be able to sit with that because that reflects on me and my team and if we couldn't get creative in time to get something at least going then that's on me and that's that's a personal thing for me so keep fighting uh keep going keep thinking until the very last minute and you'll be surprised at what you you come up with uh, sometimes you even push code 20 minutes before your first customers come through and your orders do but that last little push of code could mean the difference between a great debut or having to explain all night that you weren't ready and again you in those moments you start to think about the worst possible case but then think about the best possible case and the best possible case is even if you have to push code five minutes beforehand, even if you are scrambling somewhere to get something, even if you are putting the last little turn on a jar of salsa 30 seconds before you open your shop, then it's better than not having that jar of salsa. It's better than not having that code available. It's better than not having X and having to explain all night why you couldn't deliver. So keep pushing, um, just keep going. And there's the old saying from Alcoholics Anonymous that you don't quit five minutes before the miracle happens and again that applies to life it, it applies to addiction recovery mostly but um, amazing things start to happen in the space between when you're ready to give up and when you just bullheaded like keep going and don't accept defeat so in that time something magical is going to happen the key is don't stop here keep going keep pushing until either you hit a wall or something magical happens and you hop over the wall and we hopped over four walls that day and it was probably one of the most productive days that we've ever had. And looking back on it, it was an amazing debut and it was all worth it. So keep pushing, even if you're 20 minutes beforehand and you still don't know if everything's going, just keep trying. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's startup story. And as always, if you want 
to leave a comment down below or leave some suggestions, by all means, I'd love to. I'm always open to video suggestions or viewer suggestions. I'm happy to answer questions, so be sure to leave those down below. And if you like the video, leave a like. If you didn't like the video, leave a dislike. And we'll wrap up today's video in the normal way, and that is by me saying, always remember, friends, that you are wanted, you are loved, and you are appreciated. You have a special talent that nobody else has, and the world is waiting on you to bring it out. So muster a little courage, go out into the world, and change it. That's what the world's waiting on, you.